Me encuentro en el Foro Económico Mundial de Davos. Carlos Gómez, presidente de la alianza Nissan Renault. Esta es una alianza muy curiosa. De hecho, Carlos Ghosn es un hombre que es director general, presidente de dos empresas muy distintas en dos lugares del mundo completamente diferentes. La japonesa Nissan, que tiene operaciones muy importantes en nuestro país, en México, y la francesa Renault. Ha sido uno de los protagonistas más importantes de la industria automotriz a lo largo de las últimas décadas. Mr. Ghosn, thank you very much for speaking with us here at Davos. Thank you. Uh, tell me, it was a good year, at least in the United States, for the automobile industry, but it was a very complex year in other, in other countries. What do you expect for this 2015, and what do you expect in the future? Well, uh, overall, 2014 has been a record year for the industry. Uh, I think 2015 is going to be another record year for the industry, uh, even though the growth is going to be very moderate. We are expecting something between 1 and 2 percent overall growth. But this growth is going to be made of different pieces. Some markets are going to continue to do well, uh, like North America in general, obviously the United States, but Mexico and Canada. Uh, you're going to continue to have also a strong growth in China, even though the growth has been reduced. 7% is still a massive number for uh, the largest market in the world. Uh, you're going to have a recovery in Europe, no matter what. Uh, the measures that are going to be announced by the central bank, European Central Bank, is going to determine what is the size of the recovery, but still a recovery in Europe. Um, uh, you have a good recovery in India, which is taking place in the southeast of Asia. Anyway, now, near this, you're going to have some tough spots. The tough spots are the Russian market, uh, the Brazilian market, the Argentinian market, and also the Japanese market. So, overall, we're going to have to face completely different situation uh, in different parts of the planet, but it should be another record year for the industry and obviously it should be another record year for the Nissan. Uh, the prices of oil are dropping. What does this mean for the industry, especially when uh, Nissan Renault made such a large uh, bet on the electric car? Overall, the fact that the price of oil is going down is good for consumers and what, everything which is good for the consumer is good for the industry in general. Um, if we were present only in electric cars and small cars, then it would be bad news for us. But as you know, we have also large pickup truck, we have SUVs, uh, we have plenty of sedans of all types. So no matter what, we think it's a good news. Uh, because it stimulates the demand and it pushes the consumer to buy more cars, which is good for the industry. What has been the result of having a, a different luxury brand such as Infinity for, for the brand name Nissan? Uh, I, I think having a specific brand uh, for the premium uh, cars is uh, very good because it allows you to get all the potential that you deserve with premium cars. Uh, usually car makers start developing premium cars in their own brand and then if it goes well then they try to create a different brand to make sure that the full potential of premium is being is being achieved uh, nissan has done it with infinity infinity is in a strategy of growth uh, a worldwide growth establishing itself not only on the north american market but also in china which is now a, a big uh, a big area of development and also in europe because Uh, Europe is still one of the largest premium uh, car market in the world. Um, every time I get into my car nowadays, um, I'm amazed at the number of gadgets that I actually have at my disposal. How important is technology? How important are gadgets for the consumer nowadays? Look, technology is important. Gadget, maybe less. But technology is very important because, you know, car makers are testing different technology with the consumers. Some of them become fundamentals, very basic. Uh, uh, and uh, some of them will be marginalized. But you don't know at the beginning what's going to be marginalized and what's going to become uh, uh, basic. There are plenty of examples in the past of uh, technological breakthrough that were put into the car and now are expectation, basic expectation of consumers. Uh, so this is going to continue, uh, particularly with uh, or everything which is going with autonomous driving which requires a lot of functions, new function into, into the car. And the consumer is going to determine how much of autonomous driving he wants in his cars. So it's the beginning of the challenge. You're going to see a lot of technology in the cars. And at the end of the day, some of them are going to become basics 
All of them are, go are going to stay as options, and some of them are going to disappear. A few years back, we saw a whole political movement against globalization. There are few companies more globalized than Nissan and uh, Renault. What, what's your experience? Is globalization helping humankind? Uh, well, first, it's a trend which is irreversible, whatever we like it or not. It's a fact. And I think, uh, like anything happening at the level of the planet, uh, there are good things and things which are not so good. So it's up to us to guide the globalization in a way where the good things are optimized and the bad things are being limited. Uh, but I don't think uh, even in the most conservative area of the planet, anybody can reverse globalization. It's interesting that, you know, when we have the financial crisis starting in 2008, a lot of people were expecting a, a significant effort and significant trend toward protectionism. It didn't happen. Uh, it didn't happen. There were some minor tentative in some countries, but overall we have crossed one of the most difficult economic period uh, of recent time without any massive, uh, serious tentative to for protectionism, which means this is a tribute for me of the fact that everybody wants globalization, but they want a good part of globalization and they want to limit the not so good part of globalization. And I think we're going to continue in this trend. Um, when uh, when Mexico signed the free trade agreement with the United States, there were a number of voices that said that we, Mexico would never be able to compete. Now we see companies like Nissan that has three plants and it's probably planning other plants in Mexico. Can a country like Mexico com compete in a world today? Well, Mexico is competing on the world today. It's competing uh, in, a, in a very uh, uh, significant position because it's, I think, uh, the most competitive country in Latin America, uh, and I think it's competing uh, very well uh, with its northern neighbors. Uh, and if the economy of Mexico is doing very well, it's because of the development of the competitiveness of Mexico. So I think, you know, you cannot say at the beginning, am I going to be successful uh, in globalization or not? Uh, it's not a question. It's uh, you need to be determined to say, look, this is a trend. I need to prepare for it. I need to compete with it, and I need to prepare my country, my society, my company in order in order to compete. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very glad to see that all the efforts of the different Mexican administration uh, to prepare Mexico to compete has been successful. And today, uh, Mexico is reaping the reward from a lot of investments made in the past, and hopefully it will continue. If I look at the headlines of the media, and mind you, I work for the media, uh, they're all very sensationalist and negative. But, but, but you're telling me at the beginning of this conversation that actually the automobile industry had its best year ever. How can you combine that uh, pessimism of the media and, the, uh, and what we're seeing in the market? Uh, you know, I, I think the, the media, you have two kinds of media. You have the media which is factual, and the numbers are the numbers. Um, and 2014 was a record year of the industry. The numbers are here to demonstrate it. And then you have the spin, which is given around the number, which is more the opinion. Obviously, you still have a lot of people thinking that 2014 could have been a better year, or 2015 could have seen a better growth, which is, which is fair. But the facts are here. This industry continued to develop. The car continued to be a very important product that people aspire to buy and to renew. And um, even though it's dissymmetrical, some countries are doing much better than others, but overall, it continues to grow. Mr. Carlos Gon, thank you very much for this conversation. Thank you. Y a usted, amigo televidente, que hace posible este programa, se lo agradezco también. Esto es todo por hoy, pero no se lo olvide. Nos vemos la próxima.